Morning everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. Uh, today I'm having some work done inside the house, so I've uh, <laughs> popped outside to the gazebo while the weather's still really good. And I thought I'd record a video that I've been thinking about uh, sharing with you for, well, a few weeks. Remember I put a video out saying um, everyone should be going electric, um, everyone should be having solar, batteries, EV, and low energy bills, or no energy bills like we have here, so we're getting paid more for export than we are for the energy we import from the grid. We get a net credit over the entire year. But what if everyone did that? What if everyone had solar? What if everyone had no demand for grid energy or low demand for grid energy? What would actually happen? Is it possible that everyone could be in the situation that I am? So I thought it was worth a discussion to go through um, so what ifs and maybe, you know, I'm not an energy expert, so there's quite a few things that I don't know about the energy sector and how it all works, but just using some simple logic and some simple, I don't know, <laughs> man guesses, I'm not going to call it man maths, but man guesses, uh, we should be able to come up with some interesting discussion points. I'm not going to say this is going to be the answer to everything, but uh, with some discussion, with some knowledge from those people in the industry, maybe, just maybe, we could get an idea about, is it possible for everyone to have no energy bills or low energy bills? Right, start at the beginning then. So if everybody had no energy demand, like I am here, I'm using no grid energy at all today. If everyone was in that situation, what would happen to the grid? What would happen to um, the energy companies that weren't making any profit from us? Okay, so there's two things to say. Energy grid, well, if there was less demand for energy, there'd be less need for as much money spent on large infrastructure. You just need enough infrastructure to keep the grid there and keep it ticking over. So in theory, that could be a positive thing because it means we've got to invest less money to bring the grid up to scratch for our energy needs for the future. So having less demand for the grid is a good thing. And it's actually been uh, happening over the last decade or more that the energy demand has been coming down year on year. What about energy companies though? How would they cope with having no energy being purchased by customers? Well, this is only residential customers. So the first thing to say is they're making probably a lot more money off um, business customers, commercial customers. So even though commercial customers could install solar or wind on their roofs to reduce their energy demands, true manufacturing and the data centers and call centers and AI centers and all the big stuff um, uses a huge amount of energy which is what we see with um, some government plans and issues, isn't it, that um, especially with Octopus Energy as well and what they're saying, if you get zonal pricing, if you get pricing lower um, in the grid, then it will attract business. And if it attracts business, it's good for the country. So if it's good for the country and there's economic growth for the UK to have low energy, then the amount of money they give out in grants and the amount of money they give out as subsidies to other companies it doesn't really matter whether the energy system runs at a loss anyway if it's good for the country overall right so low energy low energy demand from customers more money being made from the commercial side but energy prices coming down because there's low demand energy companies might struggle mightn't they well energy companies are public companies that get uh, dividends from their profit and they pay them out to their shareholders and that's what they're all about the energy companies they don't care where the money comes from they're just under pressure to pay dividends out to their shareholders so if they don't make money from uh, the residential customer side they'll make money elsewhere they'll diversify they'll change you know you don't have to stay exactly the same so personally having no residential customers using energy net over a year isn't a problem to me to energy companies they'll just have to work it out won't they just look at octopus as an example they're not making all of their money through the sale of energy to private customers um, they're making a lot of their money from their software from their systems so they've diversified sufficiently that the smartness that they have in interacting with a new way of managing energy in the country they're making money through that. So, you know, they're positioned themselves very, very well and it's disrupting the market. So if some energy companies fall by the way, it's not a problem, not in my mind. So yeah, less money to be made from the energy being sold might mean that's a new entrance to the energy market. 
aren't going to last. And it's one of the reasons why I'm not really interested in having an energy account with a startup, a new energy company that tempts you in with a teaser loss making uh, rate, etc., on the hope that they're going to get enough customers and enough business to uh, start making a profit further down the line. It just doesn't make sense. And, and the same for the big established companies, you know, the Scotch Powers, the Eons, the N Powers, the EDFs. They're so stuck in their way with their old systems and their old levels of service, etc. I'd never go across to them now, now that I've experienced Octopus Energy. So the disruption that's happening in the market is going to change those energy companies anyway. And if they haven't seen this coming, then it's their own faults if they're not making as much profit. So they're not charities and I don't want to give uh, my money across to them, and neither should anyone else. So it's not a problem in my mind that energy companies will have less profit to be made. Yes, what they might do is start charging more for some of their services elsewhere. Um, is the admin of an energy account, the connection to the grid included in standing charge? Could they increase the standing charge? So they make enough profit from every customer connected to the grid, regardless of whether you're using any energy. Well, it's sort of happening already, isn't it? Um, you know, I'm not convinced about all these increases in energy costs um, and whether they're real and should still exist now since the Ukraine and Russia war um, started up. And standing charges just seem to keep going up and up and up. And it's you know always an argument that it's all about, about the infrastructure, etc. But where's the money going? You never see a breakdown of where it actually goes. And I wonder how much goes to those energy companies. So thinking on, if energy companies aren't a problem, if they make less profit, in fact, that um, makes me laugh thinking about energy companies making profit because some people love to make comments in my videos about how they're subsidising me and all of us who have EVs and cheap rate energy tariffs. There are some people out there that think that the scales have to balance that if I'm paying less then somebody else has to pay more so that the company makes profit and just how daft is that um, if I have a different tariff and I pay less for it then the company is making profit in a different way they're still making profit from me down here whether I'm exporting on a low tariff to those people that are on standard tariffs they're encouraging everyone to be on these smart tariffs with lower rates they might be making more profit from us than they are from these people up here paying the higher rates daft as that may sound but there's money to be made in shifting energy, being smart, being on smart meters, having an electric car, having a load that you can distribute and change when you use it. There's money to be made in doing that. And that's why we get a cheap rate. So the people on the higher rate are not subsidizing those people on lower rates at all. If anything, what you are subsidizing is the people, the shareholders of the energy companies. You are giving them your money when you don't have to. So if you get smart, get an electric car, get a smart meter, get a cheaper tariff, get solar panels, all of these great things, then your rate can come down and you won't be paying the dividends to these energy companies. And the bonuses to their executives, I know you'll hate that, you know, big bonuses out to the executives who have done their job and you know, earned their bonuses. Any, anyway, so um, people paying more are not subsidizing the people paying less. Um, all you're doing is contributing to the profits of the energy companies in a different way. So what happens further down the line then beyond energy companies? Well you've got the energy generators. Um, how would that affect energy generators if we didn't have as much demand? Well I guess there's going to be less new energy generators installed because we need less energy generators. So if those are all cheaper solar, wind and other renewable type energy sources then that's a great thing and if that means we don't need huge nuclear power stations and huge gas power plants burning gas all the time then that's a good thing so energy generators are going to struggle um, in some respects because if energy prices drop because energy demand is low then who's going to want to install a new wind farm or a new solar farm etc when the energy prices that they can get for it are much much lower well, it means installation costs have to come down. It might mean that there are more subsidies to make those energy installations, those energy generators profitable. And I think that sort of happens already. That you tell me if you know more, but aren't there contracts? You know, if you install a new wind farm or solar farm, you, you get an agreement about what you're going to be paid over a period of time, just like we did with the FIT tariff when we we're installing solar. 
So energy generators know what they're going to make anyway over the <laughs> lifespan, over the um, profitability. They know their break-even point on installing this stuff, and it still makes sense for them, even if the energy that we're being sold is cheaper, which it should be cheaper if there's less demand. But imagine that there was no demand. Imagine if there was no demand at all during the day. What would we do with that energy? Well, in the grid, in the country, isn't it the same as how it is in our home. So what do I do if I have no energy demand? Well, I pump the energy out to the grid and uh, I make money from that. So as a country, they'll just do the same one. They'll pump the energy out over the interconnectors that they have to different countries. So they'll, be do any, they'll do more energy trading and will be a powerhouse in the UK of providing energy, cheap energy to other countries. So being energy independent as a person is a great thing because you're not worried about bills etc but being energy independent as a country must be really really good as well because if energy sources are more distributed if there's less demand if you're independent from um, third party sources you know, other countries energy coming in then you're more secure from a military point of view view i guess um, you know the country's more independent you're not relying on other countries to provide us with gas oil wood to burn um, in power plants, you know, whatever the other things must be. So energy independence for the UK can come further down the line if energy demand reduces um, in residential houses. So, you know, the further I look into this, the more plausible it seems that everyone having no energy demand is a good thing for the country. And it's a good thing for the energy system because it puts less pressure and it's easier to manage. So why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we doing more of it? And that's one of the things that I really can't understand. It must be the influence of the oil industry and the lobbyists uh, preventing us from changing our electricity system to be priced on um, different metrics rather than the price of gas and oil, etc. So since the Ukraine war and all this price cap rubbish that we have, um, basically we're just overpaying for all our, all our energy. We should be paying less now. And it's being manipulated so that the energy generators, the oil and gas companies, basically are receiving uh, much more money now because someday down the line they're actually going to receive less. So with my tin foil hat firmly on my head I truly believe there is a conspiracy going on at the moment about energy and we should be and could be changing what we do much more rapidly but we're not. It's being delayed on purpose. Um, I'd love to know more if anyone knows from inside all the right committees etc why this is happening but it just makes much more sense to reduce demand and therefore have more local um, micro generation so that people are less dependent on the larger grid and then the larger grid can uh, better support the country in exporting energy and earning money uh, rather than um, having demand based issues and having to put more installations in bigger power plants and all the opposite of energy independence. Now, are there any examples of this working? And you, ha you have to look at Norway again. Norway's been very, very lucky because um, many decades ago when the UK was part of dividing up who owns the seashore around um, the North Sea, etc., um, they, they gave loads and loads to Norway. And Norway inherited, effectively through that agreement, lots of gas and oil. But what Norway have done is, rather than saying, I've got all this gas and oil, and just use it and therefore have cheap energy for themselves. What they've done is implemented uh, a lot of hydro energy, a lot of renewable energy, so, and they've gone electric much faster than any other uh, country. So their demand for electricity locally in Norway is very, very low, and yet they have an absolute shit ton of it. Which is what we're talking about. They truly have energy independence. So what are they doing? They're selling it. And they're making absolute fortunes. And Norway is one of the richest countries in the world uh, per capita. And that's mainly because of how their government has worked strategically for the future, looking at what they're going to do with oil and gas, energy and electricity, etc. And it's very, very smart. It just sounds so obvious and familiar, doesn't it? Familiar as in we're doing this on a residential basis, being smart with our energy, you know, not paying energy companies bills, being energy independent. All of these things just make sense. So applying it on a larger scale, rolling it out, Across the country to more people to different areas of the country and eventually the entire country must be a good thing 
So with all of this talk and all this rabble and all of this nonsense, because I don't really know what I'm talking about, you know, is it possible that everyone could go solar, electric, electric cars, and be like us and have no energy bills and low energy bills and reduce energy demand? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It is possible in my mind. Will it shake the market up? Will it change things? Yes, it will in the same way Norway has changed. It changes where companies make profit. It changes how energy is sold and how we rely on it. It changes our security issues about it. But it's all a positive thing. The more energy independent we get as a country, the better the country will be because it will attract more business. It will attract more um, manufacturing. It will attract much more here because it's cheaper to consume energy here and to produce stuff and do stuff than it is in other countries. So, um, yeah. To all the doubters, to all the people in the comments that think uh, you're subsidising me by having, uh, you're paying more to the energy companies than I am, it's just not true. It's uh, it's just not happening like that. It's your choice as to whether you consume energy uh, from the grid or whether you choose to start an electric journey and start to become energy independent yourself. It is in your power to do it. If some people say, but I rent and I haven't purchased, well, start planning. Start saving for your house deposit. Start planning to buy a house. You know, these things are strategic. They're not things that you can just switch on and do today or do tomorrow. You have to make a conscious decision, like saving for a pension. That's what I want to be doing in the future, and you need to aim for that goal. But if you don't want to do it, if you want to pay um, energy companies thousands of pounds a year and keep them happy with their dividends, good luck to you. So there you go. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'd really be interested to hear whether my take, my thoughts, my random discussion here uh, makes any sense at all, or whether there are some hurdles that I haven't thought about. Let me know in the comments. I'd really like to hear from you about, can we all go solar? Can we all go with net zero bills? Is it possible? Take care. Thanks for the thoughts and uh, keep watching the videos. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, to keep leaving comments as well because it all feeds the YouTube algorithm and keeps me here. If no one comments, if no one likes, if no one subscribes, the channel will disappear. Thanks anyway for watching. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.